Okay, so then we'll start talking about finite elements. So let's let me just uh, uh, run this demo again, and uh, I want to invite somebody to actually draw a function, and I want to show that uh, how that function is going to be discretized using finite difference, finite volume, and finite element this time. Okay. Uh, Somebody come over, please. Your function is going to be discretized uh, three times, and we will see how the three discretizations differ. Come on. Yeah, thanks. All right, thank you. So that's a fun function to discretize. So we, everybody have seen final difference, right? So we're just uh, remembering the values of the function uh, at the grid points, right? So okay, so that's uh, that's no frill. Now let's say uh, final volume. Okay, so in final volume, we just learned that uh, we are keeping the cell averages. Right, also no free, all right? So we already know uh, everything about finite volume, in one D at least. Okay, so then let's do finite element. That's my finite element approximation to this function. What is it? Huh? It's a linear piecewise piece piecewise linear approximation. That's right. I mean, in every now let's call it instead of a, a infinite difference, we call it interval. Infinite volume, we call it a volume. Now let's call it an element, right? So so in each element, we have a linear function, right? And uh, they seems to approximate this function somehow. What is somehow? Minimizes each one norm. What is each one norm? <laughs> right. So, okay. So, right. Actually, this this is a good observation. So, basically, I'm trying to minimize the difference between the original function and uh, this piecewise linear solution. Right. And just to give you another. Example, let me actually discretize this one more time using another finite element method. So this is another finite element discretization. What is it? Huh? Yes, what does it do? Well, I'm doing the same thing, right? I'm minimizing the error between the... I'm minimizing some total error, right? Between the function uh, that is originally drawn and uh, the piecewise linear approximation. Again, the approximating function is a linear function within each element. But I'm no longer asking this function to be continuous anymore, right? So, what does finite element do? Finite element simply just, uh, uh, first of all, put some constraints on the approximating function. And these constraints are what made it possible to solve the equations in the computer, right? So, the, the constraints uh, basically uh, reduces the possible set of functions from infinity to actually a finite dimension. Okay, and uh, for example, in the previous uh, constraint, uh, the, the constraint is that, okay, first of all, the function has to be a linear function within every element. And also, it has to be continuous, right? 
and then it minimizes a certain global metric of error. So for example, uh, so can somebody tell me that given this set of constraints, I have to be linear with an element and uh, I have to be continuous. How many degrees of freedoms do I have to choose in approximating this function? One in each element. Plus one, right? I can. I have a choice of the end point of uh, basically. Uh, it's uh, the, the degree of freedom. It's actually the same as infinite difference, really. I can choose the value at each grid point, and I can just uh, draw straight lines between these values, right? So, so basically, in this case, I have eleven degrees of freedom to play with. I mean, this eleven actually finite degrees of freedom is actually what makes it possible to solve equations in a computer. Because originally I have infinite degree of freedom in choosing whatever function I, I, I like. Now I have 11, exactly 11 degrees of freedom. Okay? And another thing, infinite element, that is uh, different from the previous is that instead of trying to come up with, uh, okay, how can I construct 11 equations, I'm not doing that at all. I'm minimizing something. By minimizing a global metric, I automatically get however many equations as there are degrees of freedoms, right? So, so minimization, solving a minimization problem is a natural way of uh, uh, basically getting as many equations as unknowns. If I have more degree of freedom in this, like over here, okay, in here, uh, how many more degrees of freedom do I have? I have the same grid, right? Now, how many degrees of freedom do I have? 20, right? I have two degrees of freedom per element, exactly, no matter how, how many elements. So I get nine more degrees of freedoms. I minimize the same metric of global error. I automatically get 20 equations. I automatically get nine more equations, right? I can just, uh, you can, it's hard to see for here, but I, I actually get a better approximation, right? with these uh, less constraints and more degrees of freedoms. I mean, of course, my equations get larger because I have more unknowns and automatically more equations. But uh, uh, it's the same as refining the grid, as enriching the degrees of freedoms. So basically, that's the whole idea of finite elements. OK, yes? What are the equations? Because each minimization over a cell is one equation. Right? Okay, so the specific question I get here is uh, uh, what are the uh, equations? Why, basically, why do I get uh, the same uh, equations as the degree of freedoms? Okay, so here, for example, what I'm minimizing is the integral of the f original as a function of x minus the f final element. Let me just uh, say fem of x. Square dx, integration between 0 and 1. OK? I'm not minimizing the error per element. I'm minimizing a global error. Does it make sense? So basically, uh, what I'm saying is, uh, I'm minimizing kind of the total least, least squares error across the whole domain. That's why I get as many equations as my unknowns. Because what's the solution to this? Let me just uh, define this as uh, uh, my, my error, right? Well, the solution automatically says that the derivative of the error with, each, with respect to each fi, well, let me just uh, don't call fi, let me call ai as the degree of freedoms in this equation, it has to be equal to zero, right? And i goes from one to whatever degree of freedoms I have. So, so basically, minimization is an automatic way of getting as many equations as the number of degree of freedoms, right? Okay, we are done with finite element.
Any questions? It's pretty easy, right? I mean, the, what's left is really just the figuring out uh, different ways of defining, uh, basically defining the link between the degrees of freedoms to the function, right? We used to do the approximation. And then define some kind of a metric so that by minimizing the metric, we actually get a solution to the differential equation.